Sunday Smokes, Episode 9. I'm going to be talking about retro ARs today. Just as soon as... Here for my weekly radicalization. Dude, you radicalized me. To... To the friendly neighborhood NSA analyst listening to this, that was a joke. Ah, God damn. Pardon my language there. Not that I really care, but, uh,. When hot tobacco falls on your thigh, you react. Sorry, it's taking a little while. We're back on pipes. And uh, I'm, I'm a weird pipe smoker in that I like my tobacco a little drier than most people. And uh, it's not quite where I'd like it right now. So it takes, takes an extra light to get it going. For those of you that are that are new here, Sunday smokes, we just kind of talk. I bring out either two pipes or one cigar, and we just kind of go till I'm done, or till Instagram cuts me off. Depends on the conversation. The less we talk, the more I smoke, the shorter it is. The more I talk, the longer it is, because I'm talking and not smoking. We're waiting for... Uh, Paul Reislaufer to uh, show up whenever he decides, whenever he feels like gracing us with his presence, we're going to talk about retro ARs, which are cool. So just going to kind of wait on him while, uh, while we're waiting. How's everyone doing? All-time favorite gun. That is a toughie. I'm not entirely sure I can answer that because I need to give it some thought. <sighs> it's no secret that I like my 1911s and my old-school Smith revolvers, but if we're talking all-time, now we're bringing machine guns into the mix. And uh, I love me some machine guns. Um, God dang, I just filled this. That said, I don't want to talk too much about machine guns because, I mean, that was my job. I've got a decent amount of experience with machine guns, but at the same time, it's like, I've got a, a decent amount of experience, but only on a few guns. So it's like, yeah, I don't want to go out and say I love this if I've never shot it. Ugh. All-time favorite gun. I can't answer that right now. Hey, there he is. There's Paul. Just uh, shoot that request over, and we'll get the we'll get the chat going. There it is. Needs more GBRS mount on a carry handle in here. No, it doesn't. That is not the kind of radicalization we're after here. There he is. How we doing, buddy? Oh, pretty good, pretty good. How you doing? Oh, I'm here. I'm outside, sweating, having a pipe. It's a good Sunday. What are you doing? I just told you. No, I'm talking to Laura. I know, I know. But I couldn't just let that go either. We already got we're already radicalizing people. We're already getting questions. It's gonna be a it's gonna be a good one. Paul, what's your all time favorite gun? That was a question I couldn't answer. Uh, like personally used or like that I think is just cool? I 
so the the reason I had a problem, I had trouble answering it, is because um, I don't want to talk about guns that I haven't fired. So I kind of went that direction with it. If we're just anything, whatever's just cool, man. There's so much cool stuff out there. I still don't know. The thing, the coolest thing, like my favorite that I've personally used is either a Mark 48 or a saw. Probably closer to a saw. I just, I like them. I, I, but, I enjoyed my saw too. A lot. But, uh, if it's all time favorite, that's pretty tough. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm really lusting towards a SIG 550 that I'll probably never be able to afford. Yeah, see, I, I've picked one of those up like once. And yeah, they're cool, but I don't know, you know. <laughs> well, I, I had a I had a five five six at one time, but they use AR mags and it's hard to find parts. And like mine had a one of them stupid like they came with two butt pads. They had one that was regular, that's normal, and an yeah. extra long for some reason. And mine had that one. And so the length of pull was way too long for me. Probably and, like, still shorter the than, uh, than the Hellion. <laughs> yeah. And, like, I ended up just selling it because you couldn't find parts for it, and it was just basically a heavy yeah. AR. <laughs> it's yeah. like, but I kind of regret selling it, though, but it was cool. For, uh, it would have been a great flex. Yeah. And, I mean, that's what's important here on Instagram is flexing. The only thing that's important. What did, oh. what did the Grandmaster say? If you don't look cool, what's the point? It's true. Being cool. That's why we rock retro ARs. Yes, Just that is cool. exactly why. And you've got you've got one of the coolest ones too with that Delta build you did. I know. One day, one day I'll buy a one of the Bushnell Hollows for it. I think that'd be cool on top. I did. I I'm not gonna lie. Um, other than like Rock River with their 308s, I didn't know the aluminum tube was a thing until you did that build. Well, I don't think they used aluminum. I think they used those nice carbon fibers. Well, Armalite carbon fibers too. But that just uh, I just that because that's close enough. Let me let me let me reword that. I didn't know the tubes were a thing. No. Oh. Well yeah, that's old school futtery right there. Those came out in the nineties before everyone was like, let's put all these attachment points on it. We don't need no attachment points. We'll make our own attachment points. Mm -hmm. That's With what I did. clamps and duct tape. Like I, I literally just drilled some holes in that and threaded them. <laughs> so that's how my all my stuff's attached. Oh, <laughs> uh, what do we got here? See, so you got a ready mag. How do you feel? Oh, that one's for you. Oh, yeah. it's pretty cool. Like as long as you don't have any problems, like this gun. For some reason, I had a Hodge bolt in it, and the Hodge bolt was shit. Like it only works suppressed, so like every was, time I tried to do it unsuppressed, it would like double feed or some shit, and so like it sucks when you're on a competition and you got to keep a hold of two mags because when you hit the mag release, it drops both mags unless you hit it just just very lightly, and so you have to take both. Gotta have off. the hand on the one already. Yeah, and then you gotta, and then you get, and you're sitting there trying to fix the malfunction. And then you got to put both mags back in. <laughs> and it just, oh, God. It, it's kind of a pain. Like, as long as the gun, which it, or it works now because it's got a BCM bolt in it now. But as long as the gun's working, it's fine because the, the reloads are super fast, like, with it there. But if you ever have anything besides a reload, it's a pain in the ass. That, uh, that cool, Hodge but, bolt, it was, it was scared of your carbine. Yeah, it was. It was like, <laughs> oh, my God. The Hodge Slayer. Yeah, I might have a I might have a a Gen One. Then I don't know. I bought it for my buddy. The most, he just the most like, I do. Oh, go ahead. But he just was like, I don't want this, and I was like, I'll take it, and then that's basically <laughs> it. The the closest I get to a ready mag is jungle mags, and I honestly only do those for the gram. Yeah, I'm I so used, got... used to just drop and draw from a pouch that I Ooh, would gross. probably. I would probably drop a jungle mag with the other mag still full and just like, Oh, feed from the pouch. Yeah. That's I used to, when I'm on my first deployment, they gave us those, um, those little metal mag couplers. Mm -hmm. And like this, this is like the, the first couple of months when I still had in four, I would rock those 
until it's got like it's like two an extra pound in your gun. It gets annoying. And it's funny because my platoon sergeant was just walk, rocking a twenty rounder because he was like, "Fuck carrying around a lot of ammo." <laughs> like, Man, I got extra. I'm, meanwhile, I'm over there with an M16 and Colt mags that are probably older than I am. <laughs> yeah. I think we still had a couple. We had a few like of the black faller ones. Yeah. In in circulation, but most of ours were green. Greener tan, tan towards the I, end. I think all of ours were were green, but then I mean, I I think I got out before you joined, or or a very small amount of overlap. So I I, I got in in two thousand ten. Okay, yeah, so about a year, maybe less of overlap. I got out in two thousand eleven. Yeah, I went to basic in. August and got to my unit like a month later deployed. So. Man, I I got back from my second deployment in August of 2010. <laughs> Ugh. Anyways, enough. We're we're here to talk about cool ARs, not the stuff we deployed yeah. with. Unless you deployed with a cool AR. Oh, talk about that. M M16 A4 is pretty cool. I think. <laughs> But, uh, I, I feel like this is good timing for this too with uh with Adam ah. results dropping his uh his Vicar Scud Hunter video yesterday. Mm -hmm. I need to watch that I guess. I'm way behind on my YouTube. I I just finished watching the Nine Hole Reviews M sixteen video. That was That's a good one. Yeah. yeah. And and it's 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 interesting. I've always said that I thought the C7 was the best version of the AR. And your team, A1. And well, C7, I, that's my I'm, favorite upper. I'm kind of coming around. Like, I've always liked it. But I'm. It's the A2 is starting to kind of edge out the A1 for me. Well, personally, like, just watching the video and then what uh, – M26 grenade guy said, like they only they only shot dudes at like at max 350 yards. Mm -hmm. and like it makes more sense. The A A1 side just make more sense to me. Like because you do, don't and I'm zero at, you zero it for 250 meters and you never change yeah. it. Like that's that's your max distance to engage with iron sights really anyway. So there's no point um, to have it. it. Makes sense for like I have two A2 uppers, but like. Girl, I'm gonna put you down. You can keep dropping your bottle. I have two A two uppers, and like they just stay on the same, the same thing. It's like I just like mostly I like the C seven because I like the look of the A one sights. Yeah, I think they look better. But like realistically, I think it doesn't really matter what we say. But I don't. I think the A one just a better combat sight. You know, that's kind of what they are though, because the A twos are more target oriented. It, it kind of like is. I mean. I've I've said it before that, you know, you give your standard issue rifle to the Marines for improvement, you will receive a target rifle. That's what happens. Um I like the the idea of being able to quickly change elevation, not that you would do that in a combat situation. Um yeah. but I'm not in a combat situation. So Yeah, um, it's, it doesn't matter, but personally I think the C sevens look better to me. And it just makes more sense because you're not going to be changing your elevation on the fly. And with irons only, you're not going to be sniping dudes at 500 yards. Yeah. Because you, can you can't even see a dude hardly at 500 yards unless he's standing up like an idiot. Um, unless, yeah. Yeah, unless he's standing up like an idiot. He's got a white backdrop, and that white backdrop is the size of a Jeep. Yeah. Like, it's <laughs> like, this, like, I mean, really you can – you can you can hit it at five hundred yards on like a known distance match style qualification. Just kind of toot my own horn there a little bit. Don't yeah. qualify expert. Uh, herder. What do you mean expert? You you machine gunner. Machine gunners can't shoot. Bite me. Uh, that's supposed to be the best shots. Are supposed to be machine gunners. Mm -hmm. At least back in the day, they were. Tell you what. Machine gunners do a whole lot more shooting than snipers do, so there's mm -hmm. that. Uh, this might be uh, 
I might have to break the rules here. I'm already down one pipe. I guess this tobacco is dry. Oh, Friday Savinelli for those who who are interested. Oh yeah, you do definitely need the OG though. They're pretty cool. I had one for a couple months until I I sold it to buy another red dot. <laughs> I I've got my OEG. And like I, I threw it on my wife's rifle just for a reel the other day. And I mean I, I like it fine. I'm just I'm waiting to do that one build that's just perfect for it. And I haven't quite yeah, you, done that yet. It needs to be like a an XM one seventy seven or something. Yeah. And yeah, and honestly one. like um it's hard for me to justify an XM one seventy seven when I already want to do an XM four with a Brownells four power on it, and I have no space for either. <laughs> Let's get more closets, man. Just what? Let's get more closets. Like I literally have like fifteen guns in my closet right now. <laughs> well, maybe not fifteen. <laughs> Well, here's There's the a... thing is I, I would just continue to throw them in my closet, but I share that closet with my wife and I'm going to have to start like putting them on her side. It's that or have to go, go vertical. XM4 is slept on. It absolutely is. The only thing I don't like about, and, and I can't remember if the, like the actual XM4 had the, I think it had the fat hand guards. That means it's... they, they use the skinnies. I have no idea. I'm just saying I don't like the fat handguards at all. No, neither do I. I, I can't remember if the XM4 used skinnies and then the, the, the official adopted flat top M4 had fats. But 14 and a half inch barrels, skinny handguards, A2 fixed sights. That's what I want. <laughs> that would be cool. That's basically what. Well, this one's a pencil. I wouldn't mind an M4, but it's basically what this Set, one is. A, a 727 can be either. Um, yeah. But uh, the XM4 was the the standardized adopted version of the uh, the 727. Because I b- I believe before that, like all the Car 15s you see in Black Hawk Down or whatever, I believe those were Cots rifles. Yeah, yeah the, the unit bought them on their own and kind of ignored big armies. That oh, yeah. That's why they had 723s, I think. because well, mm-hmm. they've, they've, they've been rocking them since like the early 80s. You can see pictures of dudes with them forever. The, seven, the 723 is just a fantastic garbage. I would love to have one. Yeah. But again, it's hard to have one when I want to do an XM4 and an XM177. Just collect them all, man. <laughs> You know, I have enough expensive habits, okay? Come on. I just filled this. Like, filled this and turned the live on. (laughs) Alora has much to say on this topic. I'm, I'm very happy about it. She's excited. She's like, I can see myself in control. Well, I'm excited too. So, what would we consider a retro AR? Because I'm personally, I think it has to be from the '90s. Because I don't want to consider myself old, you know. Because if we start, if we start putting in like M4s and shit, then that's going to just make me feel old. So I'm thinking it has to have a carry handle, and it's got to be from like the late nineties, at least before they started going off top of rails. I, I agree with that. But at the same time with how much is like advancements are being made and whatnot, I, I'm also trying to be realistic about it. I think I want to say M 16, a four before a cogs is so as like, late as I would go. Yeah. But like, I guess an M, any M 16 can really be retro because no one uses them now. But personally, if it's still standard issue, I think it can't be retro because, like, everyone's using M4s now still. No, like, exactly no the same using them in the early 2000s. service noises. <laughs> yeah, with A2 still. <laughs> hey, man, I was – okay, you want to talk about feeling old. I was issued an A2 in boot camp. Like, a, yeah, a Colt A2. <laughs> they gave us 
They gave us M4s with uh, M68s on them. Oh, jeez. Get out of here. Sorry, I had a, uh, had a stink bug flying around, so <laughs> I had to give it the business. Because it's like, it's circling me like a damn tiger shark. It's like, get out of here, you. But personally, like, that whole argument, though, is, like, I think a standard M4, like, with the CAC rail, is basically <laughs> as capable as anything modern today. Like, the only difference between that and a modern gun is a slightly longer free-floated rail. And yeah. the free really doesn't add all that much advantage. You know what I'm talking about? So that's why I kind of don't consider them retro, really. My, because it, it has all the same pretty much as a, a modern gun does. It has a free throw rail, just yeah. slightly less ergonomic. ergonomic. And no one here is going to argue that, like, a 20-inch M16 is ballistically superior or anything like that. But you can still... If you if you try and you believe in yourself, you can still land hits at 500 with one. If you're yeah. you know silly enough to try to do that, it it can be done. Yeah, because like one thing I think definitely with carry handle guns, which I don't know, I think some people do it, but I can't really run like a LVV an LPVO on a carry handle gun. Uh, it's just just too high for me. You're talking about Clay. <laughs> yeah, like he does. Yeah, he does have one. But I got to have, like, the dot being that high is fine with me. And the, the ACOG I borrowed from my buddy Derek, yeah. that was pretty good. I never really got to shoot it. I just played with it. But it seemed pretty nice, a good height for that. But I don't think I can mess with a, an actual yes. no, because you got to shove them way the hell forward. To you get out of that. And, I mean, part of the point of that is a more precision shot. Whereas yeah. a red dot works on a carry handle because you're just like pop, you know, as soon as you're there, you don't really, let's be real here. How good, even though it's just a chin weld, how good of a chin weld is it? It's, yeah. it's a fast shot. That's what you're concerned about. Fast and close. <laughs> well said. I can land hits out of the 450 with my 22 bolt gun. A, a lot of people can. Uh, I, I watched a video on YouTube. I forget who did it years ago, but 22 can kill you farther than you can shoot it accurately. And they used the old army test for lethality or whatever, where it has to penetrate a half inch of plywood at whatever range. And 22 was doing it at like 450 yards, but they couldn't consistently get a hit. <laughs> Yeah. I need to try that. I think the farthest I've ever shot is 22 is like 100 yards. Never really brought it out. I used to be messing around with my, my Marlin Model 60, which, which is kind of cheating because it's got the micro groove barrel and that thing will never, ever wear out. Yeah. Um, but it just empty, empty pack of cigarettes at, at 100 yards just hold about six inches low on it. Or high, I forget. It was a long time ago. <laughs> but you're 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 not aiming at the at the pack at all. But you know you can hit it at a hundred yards, no problem. Damn! How do you even? Can you even hear twenty two at that far? I, I can barely hear it at a hundred. I don't think. I just hit the steel. I don't know. See the comment? The guy, I guess he's saying somebody yeah, yeah. hit it yeah. in a thousand yards. That's impressive. I, it's impressive, but I'm also going to ask how many shots did he take before he landed that hit? You don't count those, man. Those don't count. Like like the dude um, a couple of years ago, He was, I think he was using a K11 or a K31, but he got some ridiculous iron sight hit at like over a mile. But you're watching – the video is 13 minutes long, and he's just shot after shot after shot. And it's like, I, at what point are we, are we, you know, skill versus luck here? Because <laughs> that – to me, it looked like accuracy by volume. And, I mean, you were a saw gunner. You know accuracy by volume is a thing.
going to make you build a 22. Can I bring my 1022 to one of those? Man, I haven't shot a 22 and I don't even know how. No, no, that's not true. At GunCon, I shot a 22. But it was a machine gun, so. Yeah. <laughs> I, I bought one of them, uh, them 22 conversion bolts, but I never use it. <laughs> yeah. I. I just don't, I don't, after the ammo scare of 2013, I really kind of, and how, how stupid people were getting over 22, I kind of just like lost interest in it. I'm not saying it's not great and fun and all that. I just, it's not my gig. I, the 22 I've got, I pretty much am saving for my kid yeah. whenever I get him out to the range. <laughs> hand him 22 his whole life and then when he has to go and buy his own he's gonna get a a vibe check real quick yeah can't believe it's expensive as it is it used to be like a cent around or some shit now it's like i i remember as as a kid like i'm talking like eight years old me and my dad on sundays we would go to go to breakfast at a local diner which was great back when you could smoke in there and you know dad's just puffing away on winston lights then uh we'd go to walmart and I would hand him like eight bucks and he would, you know, the guy at the counter would buy me a brick at 22 and, you know, I'd, I'd get changed back. <laughs> so, but now you walk in, I think it's like 30 bucks for what's that? I think it's like 30 bucks for a brick now. Well, my another big downfall of mine with 22 was uh, I learned what CCI mini mags were, and I just haven't looked back. <laughs> yeah, those so are I'm, nice. I'm, already, I'm already buying that Gucci 22. I'm trying to get that as my main stock. I think I got like five or 600 rounds of it right now, so I need to get more. About half of my 22 is, is CCI mini mags, and the rest is either just random bricks that I picked up now and then, or... Um, like stuff that was my dad's that I got when he passed away. So I've got, I've got a couple boxes of blazer in there, 50 round CCI blazers for like a dollar 27. The sticker's still on it. That hurts. We, we're getting distracted. 20, yeah. Yeah. Damn. Well, this happens. Distract. You know. be talking about retro ARs, man. Mm-hmm. Someone needs to do a full house like reproduction of a Colt 607. That's the dissipator one, right? No, that's the uh, the real silly smile. Oh, the it looks the like a button. short. It looks like a short fixed stock, but it extends. And then um, oh. I think, like uh, admin results, the muzzle device on his on his Blood Diamond Car 15, hey. I believe, is a 607 muzzle device um it didn't work out really well the the xm 177 was way better but uh no the the dissipator looking one was a 605 where okay. all they did was they took an X, uh, xm 16 e1 and they lopped the barrel off um far enough ahead of the front sight post to thread it. i think it was like a 15 inch barrel something like that those are, those are the depressed ones right Stop it. You, you <laughs> cut that out right now. <laughs> <laughs> that guy's funny. The DOE submachine guns. Those things are freaking goofy looking. Those are the ones with the weird handguard meant to like put into the wall, right? Yeah, and it's got like it, the the protectors for the front sight look like a Lee Enfield. <laughs> yeah, those are cool. DOE, like whoever was in charge of specking out that gun must have like to party on weekends or something. <laughs> what am I smoking? I am smoking Haunted Bookshop in the Friday Savinelli tribute pipe. Um, it doesn't feel right to smoke anything but Haunted Bookshop in here because Matches860 loved his Haunted Bookshop. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of Burley. Which is ironic because American blend cigarette tobacco is like 70% burly, and we all know that I don't just smoke pipes and cigars. Oh, 
But you know, it's it's not bad. I like it now and then. Sorry to sidetrack there, but I mean, it is Sunday smokes. It's a default topic. <laughs> He's trying to get me on a tangent so that way I slow down smoking, <laughs> make the show last longer. 1975 Romeo and Juliet for the dice. That's not that's not a bad smoke. <laughs> Here, here, here's how we'll here's how we'll segue back to uh, back to retro ARs. These are Cuban <laughs> Boulevard Bellicoso. <laughs> so is this one. Miami, yeah, mean, my friend, is not Cuba. <laughs> this is true. What do you? I've never even been to Miami, but I know it ain't Cuba. But I imagine it's pretty close. I've been to the the Alabama part of Florida. If that counts. Uh, no, that's. South Alabama. Because apparently <laughs> there's two Floridas. What are you going to tell me? There's two Chinas next? Well, no, there's only one China. There's it's like an island. Florida. Yeah. Okay. I'm done messing with the Zippo. We're getting out the Basset Hound. People think I'm a savage because I'll light a pipe with a Bic, but honestly, this is one of the best. This is the best soft flame lighter you can get, and it doesn't cost eighty dollars. And you get a little basset hound with some stakes. Mm. Y'all could do your own perfect M16. What would it be? Ah, uh, heck. Maybe, maybe this with an actual A1 lower, and not an arrow lower. Also, I'm from South Alabama, so shut your... Yeah, I see your posts with Hub City Outdoors all the time. I know you two are homies, and he just sends you here to harass me. <laughs> uh, hey, Doc, not a whole lot's up. Just kind of... We're trying to stay on topic with retro ARs, and it's not working out that well. <laughs> but I would say... Actually, I think I want to do like a, an A1 with a 203. I think that'd be cool, too. I don't know if I'll ever be My perfect AR would honestly be the A4 that I used at Cornfield Brutality, except a proper A2 upper versus the detachable carry handle. That's the only thing I'd change about that. That's the one thing we're missing. I need an A2, too, because I've recently, I think I've decided I wanted one. I don't know why, but I just think I want one. Well, and from the gun counter is a, is a huge A2 rear sight advocate. Now you get that sight and a 20 inch barrel and you throw some 77 grain rounds in there. You're, you're getting stupid. (laughs) They are fantastic rifles, but yeah, I think I, I mean, I'm pretty boring. The, the most exciting thing about that rifle is, uh, I use that impact weapons components uh, plastic handguard mount that I, I cobbled together a, a light using uh, one of the – it was Onyx Arms that sold them. I think it was Turquoise Paint Pen that, uh, that made them was uh, the Surefire 660 body. Yeah. Use the, the plain old tail cap that, you know, all it's got is the socket for the pressure switch. And then um, I put a mod light. OKW head on it, and I, I, I get the hype with mod light now. That thing has some throw, but uh, yeah, that's I mean that's the most exciting thing about this. Other than that, it's a Wyndham weaponry, twenty inch government, and the only thing I'd change is put an A two upper on it. Yeah, like uh, I think if I did an A two, I'd do like one of them, like early invasion ones with like the Pec two on the uh, mount, barrel mount. And I'd probably end up doing like a 660 or something mounted in the barrel or something like that. That that would admittedly be cooler, but um, mine's already set up the way it is, and I don't feel like changing it. <laughs> well, it's nice. I like it. Just need an A2. Go get you a Delton A2 up here when they come back in stock. It, when they come back in stock, that's that's the key thing. That's where I got this one. Like This is a Delton I bought like at the height – of the like last year at the height of like the craze, mm-hmm. they just had it in stock for like I think it was maybe ninety dollars for a strip one, but 
Only problem is tracking down a good side assembly, which I found a hookup yeah. for that. If you need it, ever need one. Really I, think it's, I think it's Am Amherst Depot or something. They got all kinds. They got the good A, the good A1 rear sight assemblies and the A2s. Uh, with with the whole AR craze, I think part of the reason the A1 style or C7 is so popular is because of the sight assembly. I feel like those uppers are cheaper to make than the A2s. Yeah. Well, like when Brownells was selling them, they were selling C7s for like 75 bucks. Mm -hmm. So you can get them cheap. And I think the A1s were like 150 or something. But I don't know why they're so much more expensive, but. Um, I can't remember what they were selling this, you know, that stuff for. I know that they're, I think it's 125 for one of their A1 lowers when they're okay. in stock. Um, I bought one of those lowers, you know, it, it just one of those things I jumped on, but for uppers, I mean, they both the Brownells A1 uppers I have came with rifles. Yeah. <laughs> I, I bought my A1 and then uh, then Sarah's 601. You know, if, if you want to do something different than a Mark 18, let me introduce you to the 733. 733. <laughs> and by extension, the 6933. Nice. <laughs> Is what the Mark 18 should have been. I don't know why they didn't. I get what they were trying to do. It was it would they wanted to make the barrel as short as they possibly could while still being able to effectively suppress it. I suppose effectively is a relative term, but you know the no. the seven thirty three and sixty and seven thirty eight and sixty nine thirty three all existed. So yeah, you you keep saying a bunch of random numbers, and I don't know what they mean. <laughs> uh, it's because I'm in the well, I'm not in. The uh, the Colt cult, but I suppose I could be because I have a Colt upper and I have a Colt pistol. Yeah. And I have a stupid, expensive idea for a for a product comparison that I need to not be thinking about, but I am, and it has nothing to do with ARs. I was going to compare oh. a, uh, a a pre lock Smith and Wesson model sixty six, so just a stainless steel model nineteen to a new production Colt Python. That'd be cool. Spoiler alert, the Smith & Wesson's going to win because it's like $600 cheaper. <laughs> I think, I've always thought a comparison between like the the, the Smith & Wesson and the Colt 1970s would be cool. Mm. Like, see, because I know there's not very much different. I think the only main difference is the direction that the button goes when you uh, open the cylinder. The, uh, the the direction the cylinder rotates as well. That makes you too. Um, Colt's fix because it would it would work itself out of time going uh, yeah. Smith and Wesson's direction. Colt's fix was to just reverse the direction the cylinder revolved in, and it worked. But I still favor Smith and Wesson's kind of push button release versus Colt's pull, goofy pawn piece release. Yeah. I've always thought those looked better, but we're, we're distracting ourselves again. Okay. Yes, yes, we are. Yes, we are. Terrible. Who are the waving? Who is that waving? Oh, here? I don't know, probably one of my kids. Also, the only good 5.56 AK is a Galil. So <laughs> write that down. And underline it twice. <laughs> points. Cool points if you know the movie that's from. Write that down and underline it twice. The Smith & Wesson bodyguard is the best to nothing. Be a man, carry a Model 36. Or be a thick man and carry a Colt, Dete uh, Colt Detective Special. Oh. I was about to say, that's backwards, homie. You're putting a mag in the wrong way. I got a beard hair in my magazine for some reason. Oh, well. Why, you know, just before you got on camera, just with your mags. Yeah. 
Well, it's my only cult bag, so I got to. Okay, okay, that's fair. Well, no, I got some. I changed. I have some twenty rounder colts. This is my only thirty rounder colt. I've I've got a bunch of uh, brown owls bags, yeah. and, and one OK Industries. Well, like um, on my second deployment, that was back when we, they were closing everything down in Afghanistan, or at first started to. So we were we were like just closing down the outside cop cops and shit. And so like I ended up coming back home with like two hundred and something mags. Jesus. So that's where I've been. That's where I've been working out of. So they're basic. There's like like half unmarked, and like a quarter, another half, like another quarter of that's like brown ales mags. And the rest are OKs. So I've just been working through those slowly but surely. Be a man and carry an Alaskan. A Winchester Model 70 Alaskan? I would love to. You know, the root of all our distractions is brown coat. Hub's yeah. little agent in here keeps keeps derailing us. Gifted at this. Go back to why, why, are, why are retro guns cool? Well, the, the first answer is they just are. So, yeah. uh, uh, A legitimate point here is how much lighter they are than Dude, like, no, anything. Like, this one's pretty heavy because it's got this stupid-ass aluminum rail on it. But like, you pick up a – like I think my M16 is lighter than that. Like this M16 is stupid light. Like all the weight feels like it's right here where the buffer is yeah. at. My, and, my, and this thing, good. The uh, the sixty nine thirty three or Colt Commando build that I'm doing, it feels heavier than my A one does, and it's an eleven and a half inch barrel. Well, it's because they got it's probably got like a SOCOM barrel or some dumb shit. No, they uh, the sixty nine thirty threes or Commandos use uh, pencil barrels. Oh, like, really? Even even still. Um, I think the bulk of the weight is the uh, the Knight's Rail that's on it. Yeah. But I also feel like it's it's not actually heavier. It's I feel like it's the same weight, but it's such a smaller package that it feels heavier. Yeah. And it's not probably as well balanced, but like these are balanced to oh, the yeah, rear. Yeah. Or they, they feel are, like... I don't they think they're super really pointable. I think it still balances... Kind of at the delta ring or just behind it. That it, it feels like it's way heavier back here. That's what um, people were saying about uh, the six hundred five from Brownells is that it's got that kind of the balance point is just a, a hair further back because you know chop off the barrel. So not only is it stupid light, but it's stupid handy. Yeah, and the cool thing about them too is, like, realistically. The only thing you need to put on them is a light, and it's still pretty easy to put them on there. Yeah, like, especially with impact weapons components mounts. Like you just put them in the handguard, and they're solid. And that's the thing that I've I've kind of come to realize because I used to be, you know, gotta have M lock or gotta have Picatinny or whatever. And it's like if you're not using nods, if you don't have to mount a laser that needs to hold a zero, you have no reason at all to add that extra weight. Yeah, of a rail, like, other it, unless you're just wanting to look cool, you know. Which the is also awesome. hand guards are fine. It's like yeah, like really, all you need to do is put some 550 cord on your front sight post yep. and put a line on it, and then you got a perfectly capable gun to do dumb shit with. You got, um, and with that 550 cord, the sling you're going to mount is a Hub City Outdoors. Alice yeah. Nod sling. <laughs> exactly. That's a good one. Yeah, they're only like I 30 bucks. I didn't bring any of mine out here. I put them all on the tables because I was super excited. I I didn't even think about it. I, I do have the, uh, the world's finest fighting pistol here, though. Uh, I didn't bring mine. Well, it's in the yours, is, yours is Philippine pop metal, so it doesn't count. Hey. Hey. <laughs> It, it, it's literally for shooting matches when I run my old guns. <laughs> I 
speaking of matches, Cornfield using that A4 and, and this particular 1911, I'm still, like, super happy with how everything went with that. Except that uh, the long-range stage. That taught me that I need to spend a lot more time on iron sights. Yeah. It's hard, dude. Like, I was a uh, couple – I guess it was last weekend. I went out and zeroed that the Black Hawk down gun, and mm-hmm. that shit – it's hard to do at 330 yards or whatever with irons. Yeah. I had to – like, what I do is I always get a big piece of paper and then, like, circle – like, do some spray paint and do a big black dot so I can actually see this, see it. Yeah. And then I'll I kind of lollipop it. I could do, like, a 6 o'clock hold. Mm-hmm. But I ended up having – after the first group, I went down and made the circle bigger because I guess I'm getting blind. And I, I, I can hardly see it. And, like, I just – it's like – I think the circle ended up being, like, 12 inches or something like that. Yeah, and it, and the front sight perfectly fit right over top of it. So, so that's how that's just it's hard to do with the uh, irons, especially ones that are not like the super precise precision ones. I'm I'm gonna be honest. The way I zero is uh, now if if I'm using my ACOG, I use the reticle you're, the way you're supposed to. But with iron sights, I go to uh, the local Frontier Justice because they've got a 50 yard lane. And I do a 36, 300. I am, I do point of aim, point of impact at 36 yards. And then at the earliest opportunity, cause yes, zeroing for the max distance, like you said in your post is better, but I can't just do that. So I go and confirm it at 300 at the earliest opportunity. Yeah. Cause like, that's what ha- I was, I brought it on. Cause I, what I mentioned, cause what I know, what I did was I kind of, I, I rough zeroed it at 25 meters which yeah. is like 20 yards, I think. Ish. And then when I, up, when I went up to the 300, like it, the first group was like, like maybe six inches low and about six inches to the right. Yeah. So it was way the heck off from being zeroed. And so that's why I really mentioned it, because like if I was to just say, hey, that close zero is good enough, and I went out and tried to hit something, you wouldn't be able to hit shit. wouldn't be able to hit shit out that, that far. Well, yeah, you just magged up in the track. Oh. That reminds me of. Have you ever read? Um, fuck, what's it? What is it? Um, Charlie Mike. That I try to get other Paul to read. I I don't think I have. Well, it's basically just uh, it's a book written by a, a like a Vietnam a guy that was a ranger in Vietnam, but the, the story is about the Vietnam L- uh, rangers. Yeah. And, like, they're doing part where they're all re-zeroing the rifles, and some dude's like, all our ambushes are in, like, 20 yards. What do we need a zero for? <laughs> <laughs> and then the, the sergeant guy went over there and just, like, fucked up his zero. I was like, try to hit that right there. And he couldn't hit it. And like, yeah, that's why you need a fucking zero, man. <laughs> it's like when, when I was reading uh, The Village, Side note real quick, just keeping an eye on the time so it doesn't cut us off. We got like maybe five or ten minutes left. Um, but uh, reading The Village, the the early part of the book, before they got M16s, you got these like 15 Marines out there with M14s with the issued bipods, and they would set night ambushes waiting for Viet Cong to go by. And... You know, they, they took the every marine a rifleman and threw it out the window. Every marine was a machine gunner. <laughs> they would just, they, they f- would think something was on the trail and one guy would just start mag dumping and then the whole squad would start mag dumping an M14 down the trail. <laughs> <laughs> shit. It's like, oh, what's, a- holy shit. <laughs> Dude, if you ever, get, you ever get a chance, read The Village. That stuff I need is to get- wild. I got so many books in my pile, though. Like half, yeah. I got three bookshelves, and then one bookshelf is dedicated to books I need to read that I haven't read yet. So I'm way behind. I gotta, I gotta catch up on my pile too. Then I, then I can lie to myself and tell me I'll get through my Amazon list someday. Ever, I have like a couple hundred books on there. Every time I buy one book, three more end up getting on the list. It's like, it's like my gun list. How does this happen? Oh, that's right. People are making recommendations to me, and I think it sounds good. <laughs> I want to read that. 
stupid people in the group chat tell me to buy an AUG. I don't want an AUG, but I but I want one. <laughs> that would be cool. I didn't even know they had Firefly books. Because I like what? based on the Because I'm going to have to go add some more books to my pile now if there are Firefly yeah. books. That, 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 could be, that could be really bad. Yeah. Because I love that show. Oh, and the movie. It's so great. I, I got introduced to it backwards. Um, I saw the movie before I saw the show. But it was, a, it was a buddy of mine in the barracks. You know, I just stopped by because it was Sunday. We were going to start drinking. And um, I was like, hey, man, what are you watching? Oh, there's a movie called Serenity. It's based on a TV show called Firefly that only had one season. I'm like, well, what's it about? And he kind of stares at me for a minute as he ponders this question. And he says, Space, Space Cowboy. Cowboy Pirates. <laughs> and I'm like, go on. <laughs> I've yes. <been> since. <laughs> Dude, Jane is the best on that show. Mm-hmm. Like the the episode where Mal gets accidentally married and he come brings yes. out Vera. That's my favorite it's, episode. Is my favorite. And Jane yeah. is pretty good too. How how many times a day do we quote that episode in the chat? <laughs> I don't know. That's pretty good. I'll be in my bunk. <laughs> oh. All right. But well, we Jane did. would rock carry handle ARs, okay? So That's remember right. that, guys. Jane would walk, rock carry handle ARs. Yes, he would. With carry handle optics. Actually, yes. No, I feel like Jane would be a gooseneck guy. Those are cool, too. Like, I think Which, I only really like them on M16s, though. Because, like, the carbines, they take up all the handguard space. Yeah. It's like you can, you can do a gooseneck on a carbine, but you ain't doing much else. Unless yeah. you get into like funky QXL dive light stuff, or or you give uh, Gangster Group guy a bunch of money, which yeah. if I ever do this XM4, I'm going to give him a bunch of money because I want something worked up with a mag light. Dude, that that was sexy. Mm-hmm. His mag light thing. Because I don't think don't do the dive light. Because my buddy had one. I guess he bought it from some dude in like Croatia or some. Yeah. European place, and that thing was shit. Like I guess he put a shitty, uh, shitty lens in it, and so it was like a fucking ten lumen light. <laughs> yeah, it. You know, my my six P has more lumens. No, I, if I did a mag light, I would cheat and use a three D cell with an LED bulb. But yeah, you have to. That's what I'm gonna. That's what I did with the the Delta guns. Got the upgraded six sixty head in it or yeah. bulb. In it. And eventually, I'm gonna do the same thing to. This other gun, whenever I get the money around and buy that new bulb, because those things, that's a bad improvement. What do you want? Old school Surefire 6P. Man, I remember getting, going to supply and getting a 6P brand new in the package, making me feel old here. But I think, I think that's about it because I don't want Instagram to cut us off. So, okay. It was a great talk, even though we got derailed a bunch of times. Yeah. Um, And we will have to do it again. At some point. Oh, yeah. So thanks for stopping by. Thanks for bringing Alora. She's so cute and loud. Very yeah. involved in the conversation. But, um, Left out. Everyone that came and ha- hung out, thanks for, thanks for stopping by, and we'll catch you all next week. Oh, yeah. all right. Yep, take it easy.